Well, three out of our four regions are done for for the day. Just NA Xbox stands in the way. Elevate off stream here today, so we have actually a pretty good one on the roster here for us today. I mean, normally if you're watching uh, an Elevate set, sorry, this is Kresnik, by the way. If yeah, you're yeah, watching an Elevate set, normally you're thinking, okay, probably a uh, probably a 3-0 here in this case. Uh, but Cats on Mars and Wasted Potential here in our fourth and final set of the day should be a fun one. Off stream, of course, uh, as I mentioned, Elevate E-Storm. I mean, that's a, a top versus bottom matchup. So here in this case, you get uh, kind of some of the sandwich matchups here. Mm -hmm. These two versus three, you know, our, our first set of the day well, was a very similar one. That one ended up going 3-2. Actually, I was way wrong on that. I, I, e Storm actually has gotten a lot better. I didn't give them enough credit. They're in our second spot here. I, I, I'm used to seeing them down towards uh, the bottom here. They're going to get to go up against Elevate. Prove me entirely wrong. Prove me the fool here in this case. It is a three versus four matchup. So Cats on Mars in that third spot. Waste potential down at four. So honestly, hats off to E Storm. They've made some big improvements over their last split. Uh, but looking at, at, at this matchup, Cats on Mars, Wasted Potential. Still pretty close in, in the standings, but still searching for that first win are the Wasted Potential boys. I remember being impressed watching Cats on Mars, too. I mean, yeah, they are one and two, but I remember seeing some pretty good micro play from them in general the last time we saw them play. So I'm excited to see them play. Also, this yep. is like the casual region for me. Like right. When I play casuals, these are some <laughs> of the console players I see in my game. So always nice to watch them uh, get and go on their on their biggest stage. Yeah, that's right. And it should, should be a fun one to, uh, to jump into. Cats on Mars, of course, Mr. Pickles, Taco Bell Waifu, uh, Ian Hart, Clever Pup, Regan, or Reagan, and... Uh, Oh geez, that's what, a hard what's one. What's up? Chat, chat, chat. the tank. Yeah. Go to was, his I'm single guessing. and let him say it again. What? Chimula say it again. I'm, I could be wrong. I could straight up <laughs> be wrong, but well, it came out a lot cleaner and faster than mine did. A uh, good <laughs> roster though there for Cats on Mars. You're right. Honestly, pointing out that that they've just improved, gotten a lot better as of recently, because it's a hard a hard line to draw when you're going up against Elevate week after week, trying to find that motivation to stay improving. And they've certainly done that. It really surprised us towards the end of the last split yep. as well. So uh, definitely a team to keep your eye on as we move into the map bands for our fourth set of the day here. Of course, you got Fish Market. Fish Bizarre. Market again. I want to watch Fish Market. Bizarre you, gone for weighted potential. want to watch Fish yes, Market? Yes, I want to watch Fish Market. Waters Gate, Shattered Desert, both gone. Why do people not like Fish Market? <sighs> because it's the kind of map where you can play quad DPS. And it's, yeah. great, to, and it's great to watch. Yeah. But... It is not great to play, and I think maybe I'm just placing myself back in that player <laughs> position every time because it's the most common map in casuals all the time, too. So either way, they got rid of it because they're sick of playing it from their casuals. They want to do something different in this game. And it's also a wide rotation-focused map, yeah. Shattered Desert also being banned out, too. So all that style of map are kind of just off the field for this game. Yeah. Gone, unfortunately for me. Map number one is Frog Isle. All right, there's a bit of a silver lining for me. I love myself some Frog Isle. Of course, you always got to look at the snipers, the long-range damage dealers in this one. Maybe some flankers coming out to play as we jump down into Frog Isle, of course. Yeah, snipers, as we you said, always big part of this map. Flankers were kind of coming back in. There was a long period where people just thought every flanker was bad on this map. Yeah. And then some people were pulling out, like, Androxus. And Eevee, this is a certain time where Eevee wasn't mm -hmm. seeing too much play, but still, teams are kind of... We're kind of reaching back into that Eevee Mave, such big priorities. Not so much on console, but... You know, it's still that Champions flank presence can, can be, uh, the uh, the forced to be reckoned with here. Well, they're going to opt for the victor, team. first of all. Yeah. I mean, long-range consistent damage. I mean, that's certainly something that victor provides. Tyra Ash, maybe, for Cats on Mars on the opposite Dude, side. She's been a force to be reckoned with today. Like makes her teammates lap. better yeah. around her. Can do a good bit of damage uh, herself as well. And a point that I brought up with Nick still stands here. I mean, when you pick a Tyra... I mean, you're kind of keeping the door open to so many different compositions. Could yeah. still be triple DPS, could be triple tank, could be standard. Don't really know what you're going up against here if you're wasted potential, but you are going to pick yourself a Grover and potentially an Anara as well. Yeah, I like triple tank on this map too. I feel like the aggression it kind of opens up for you in the danger the side is really good. Khan still open, so they could go like an Ash Khan Barrack. Tyra triple tank if that's how they choose to go. Hmm. Uh, Barrack, well, it could still be on the table if they do lock the Barrack, but Ying will come in instead. Could be a solid hero for the triple tank if that Khan does remain open to the last picks. And apparently now, focusing Lens Ying is something yeah. you have to look out for. I, I tweeted about Ralki on last game. That was a monstrous yeah, it was play crazy. by him on, uh, it was on absurd. It was absurd. And apparently that's something you have to keep your eyes peeled for uh, nowadays. Uh, Amani maybe, maybe rearing her head here. 
Haven't seen her in, in quite a minute. Is there some uh, some reasoning maybe behind an Amani on this map? Usually you'd play Amani like to counter a death ball. Like if you were if you're running splitting ice and the frost bomber is really good for that. But I could even see maybe in like a point burn situation where right. since they have the Tyra, you want someone else that can hard focus that point. Maybe you just sure. grab Amani, get a root uh, onto the barrack and try to end the game fast before execution. triple before the um, resiliences are online. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I'm really excited about the Imani coming back into this one a little bit. Dragons, of course, all that fun stuff to, uh, to be had on the Wasted Potential side. Kinesa, the only sniper in this one. You're going to pair that with the Tyra. Some good damage to be had across the border. Fourth and final set of the day, though, about to kick off. Game one, Frog Isle, take it away. Well, I know if you've been playing any of the PTS, you've probably gotten used to hearing flash out, but no strikes this time yeah. around. It's only going to be the Kinesa coming through. But Imani, back in the game, back played. How do you feel about her? I feel uh, I feel good about her. You I mean, feel good about she's her? a character that I was I so like excited for her to come out. <laughs> um, so I was, I'll be honest, I was a little sad to see her fall into just like the kind of auto attack bot style. You know, for being a stance switcher with all these cool spells, to yeah. see the gameplay just be karate uh, chopping from the back uh, line. It was, I'll be honest, I was a little uh, sad the way that she kind of ended up in practice turning out, but I think she is still one of the coolest characters in the game. And I think a lot of fun stuff could be done with her kit and cards in the future. You got to keep your eyes out for, well, how much splash damage she's going to be able to do, but also that, being able to root anybody and everybody into one spot and playing an angle. I feel like uh, lately the person I've been watching and seeing play her a little more often, the Imani, has been Simzalu, like, willing to pull her yeah. out, but still hasn't been a whole lot. Yeah. Still going to be able to get a lot of free damage, but right now it's just free percentage for Wasted Potential, 48% on the point, and finally some first blood coming through, but it's going to be the Kinesa. Yeah, fun stuff here. She can absolutely have this crazy impact. If you find the right line of sight, punish it. 57% already grabbed for Wasted Potential, but they do have to see themselves out of this fight. There's another one for Ian Hart. I like the way that he's positioned so far. And the fact that you make that rotation, you know, average Kinesas will just sit at the window the whole time. Good and great Kinesas will rotate once they get that initial pick to make sure they stay involved in the action. And it gives them, like you said, the perfect angle to shoot right through the window and still potentially keep this victor on his toes. And are going to jump down, trying to touch down and at least get some overtime. But there's going to be a headhunter going for the crits and ends up just firing into a lot of nothing as of right now. But Nara getting burned down, about to fall down, and that's going to be Vivian, surprisingly enough, on the Tyra, getting the kill. But now Pau getting aggressive. This crossfire is going to need to oh do a lot. My. There it is. Blasts right through the shield. And Khan's HP Grover backs his butt up into a firebomb, and Cats on Mars are able to grab the first payload off the back of that nice pinch here from MH Vivian, not to be confused with the character, is playing Tyra. Quite well, we might add. 5-0 and oh after that first point. Whew. And a good crossfire again. Does everything they need it to and still keeps them going. Also getting aggressive, able to find a double kill right there and just keeping this payload moving. One of the best things about Frog Isle is its ability to potentially turn into a 4-0. And even though you got that one return kill from the victor, that is the only kill they've been able to achieve. And right now it seems like everyone, even Japan, is all locked down just outside their base for wasted potential. They need to get out soon. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this. Again, the theme of staying involved, making the rotation to find new fun lines of sight to work with, and it's, it's paying off. I mean, everybody that's exiting until right then, I suppose. <laughs> Everyone who's coming out of base is taking, you know, massive chunks of damage. You're seeing this payload push extremely far, extremely fast, too. Not very much ground left to cover here for Cats on Mars. You have to imagine Ed Hunter hits 100% here. Crossfire's just a couple of percent off. If Cats at Mars just throw everything at the wall with this much time left, they could potentially get this one through with nothing spent if they take their time. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest thing is, is taking your time, maybe not getting impatient. There's going to be a crossfire, so they're looking to burn it down. Right now it's just going into a rock. The shield's going to get melted pretty quickly, but no kills just yet. A beautiful stun coming down from the Ash to be able to set up a kill. Velocity going to go down, and now Headshot's ringing true. Gets no. a nice heal to be able to stay engaged in oh, this con. Going to get no, chased Gore. down and melted by three. Can you believe that? Right at the right moment. Can like, Khan misses, that? what, two shots? Oh, golly. Just a, that's it, Ooh. man. That is a, another perfect example to show of how just one shot, one ability, one this, one that, one misposition can change the course of a round. Tyra lives. Khan dies for free. 30 seconds on the clock here. This payload 
Still extremely close, but have to win the fight. Have to uproot some of these more tanky characters, Inara included. She has been absolutely stalwart on the objective in contesting this payload, making sure that not another inch comes for free. Well, that's going to be a very, very solid overpower kill onto the support. Still enough time that they should be able to make it back to the fight, but the question comes up is what you said again. What are they willing to commit to at three seconds left on the clock before overtime starts? And you're going to be just in the right area. There's going to be some old spot crossfire that got charged up and is burning through this con one more time. The payload moving forward. And I didn't What's think happening? it was going to happen, but Tyra is refusing to lay low. And here's a nice little uh, Sir Dominus for you to help set that up. Monty, of course, was the first target there. Look at how Tyra Low was, that silhouette. Really good job splitting that team fight as well. You could see Grover and Inara were sort of backpedaling out towards Victor, but Imani and Khan were kind of caught there, caught in. 0 and 3 for both of them in that duo. Points you can see, I think, I think that was the third crossfire of that round. Wreckers and Bulldozers coming online, not only to be able to deal with Imani's Dragon, but potentially to get rid of Inara's Wall, as well as the Warder's Field. If, if a late-game Bulldozer three, two, comes online, one. Tyra's just going to be able to go straight through even a fresh wall. <laughs> I like the, the image of Crossfire being popped, Wall going up, and Tyra just saying, I don't care today. <laughs> Just keep on going, keep on firing. Here's going to be the dragon, Whoa. but you see how fast that's getting melted. No big damage, but Ian Hart is going to be the first blood of the fight. A good trade from the victor is going to get them back on the point. And with comeback mechanic, they're already at 50%. And I mean, that's the first dragon of the game. That's that's it. That is as effective as that Three dragon is going fires, to be at one any point. Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough counter there. And you're right, comeback mechanic means that. This, you know, this one's off to the races. No dome shield because it was used to convert the payload in the last round. But Barrett gets in there for the touch and survives. Overtime still taken down. Khan is one hit right now, and Knessa going to be able to find that one. Not the headshot, but still enough damage. Grover under fire and under duress right now. The same thing can be said with this. And I love this use of the ult crits galore coming out from the headhunter for Ian Hart as they retake control. Oh, nice but shot. it is 99 to 42 right now, and the kills are coming up victor. Pow, making sure that he puts pressure onto this Knessa. Victor will lose his life for his transgressions. Double shields to bail out the front line. Lots of healing. Look at the Yings all set up and ready to go to the point where Barrick quickly refreshed and then goes in from that what was a position of duress for a time. And just like that, Cats on Mars turn it around. Very nicely done. Patiently played. They did not rush it. They didn't play into that dragon. They made sure they dealt with the biggest threat in the game before moving forward at the precise moment they needed to. I mean, they took it from 0 to 99 as wasted potential before dropping it. And, and a lot of the pressure came down to that Kinesa barrage going to drop right now and is going to get rid of that Kinesa, who has been a huge thorn in the side for wasted potential with the angles Ian Hart has been playing. They get rid of Clever Pup. And while Vivian has been doing stellar so far this game and has lost their streak by now, but has the crossfire, is ready to be aggressive. I like the call to fall back with two minutes left just to chill for a little bit as Cats on Mars. On the topics of uh, ultimate charge and, and the wake of flash out. You know, that's <laughs> a, it's kind of like a new school of card that I think Koga got first, I want to say. I believe so. But it was never like enough, you know what I mean? So we're, you know, we were too far off one way with Koga and now we're probably too far the other way with Strix. But I, I, I think it's... Could be fun potentially for that card to find a, a decent balance. It could be a good, you know, one or two pointer no. for some people. As we see 114 here on the clock, ultimates are at the ready. What's got your head and hands over? That's uh, that was a. I don't. I don't even remember what they're called, but the little streamline, the oppressor mine from Kinesa. It, you you never talk about them. Yeah. And it just got a kill. I mean, that's the glory of a headshot. And this is going to be the glory of an Assert Dominant. It's going to be a nice stun. Not going to have the Kinetic Burst just yet. He's going to be able to get the dash off in time. But it's going to zone, and it's good control. The payload moving forward, and it's going to be a 4v5 for the moment. As with 45 seconds left on the clock, well, you're losing members left and right. I don't even think they're going to need all of this time. I don't know if they're going to need too many more ults. Rolling it on in. Even Ian Hart, the Kinesa player, has moved from the back line basically to the front line. One last dragon to do that dance. As good as it looks, it cannot contest the payload. Does not have the power of Io's Fox. 
I guess Luna is the Luna. name of it. <laughs> Can't contest it, and it's going to roll home for 4 0. Also, has infinitely less cute hats than Luna, as far as I know. But either true. way, it comes through. I mean, Bulldozer was picked up very early that game. Crossfire happened too many times that <laughs> game. And Ian Hart just played all of the right angles. I mean, it, it just felt like a very solid team play from Cats on Mars yeah. versus what we saw out of Waste of Potential. A lot of good point control, at least at the initial second round, but it all slipped through their grasp. Yeah, I mean, a lot of good moments there. One we caught on replay with Ash sort of splitting the team fight where Ash and Barrack shielded each other. Ying quickly got them both topped off, ready to get back in the fight. I think Mr. Pickles, the way he touched in the second round after the Dragon went down, when things, you know, when it gets down to the wire and a team with comeback mechanic is putting a lot of pressure on you, I think a lot of people will make mistakes in the heat of those sort of overtime moments. But Cats on Mars show that they have, you know, pretty decent resolve to be able to take that slow continue to do things right, and close this one out 4-0. Unfortunate slash lines for the tanks there. Wasted potential. You could see that person of Uranus not really out of this world with the 1-6. and six. The same thing there for Jehovos at 1-6, and six, whereas well, you look no further than the 10-2-12 Vivian as yeah. far as you could be concerned. A little bit of a Red Ranger build, the Wrecker, the Bulldozer, <laughs> the Cauterize, just doing pretty much anything and everything to melt anyone and everyone in front of them. Part of that is is Tyra is one of the few damage dealers in the game that still is sitting at, I believe, 2,400 base HP, can throw 200 HP through loadout cards on top of that while having some innate lifesteal just on her base kit. So this character, especially in the early game, can Oof. really, really get ahead of you. You know what I mean? And having you know bonus damage and things like that. There are so many just static advantages that Tyra has over a lot of other characters. So. When you're hitting all of your shots and, and factoring all these things in, you're going to win those mathematical duels a lot of times. I'll be 100%. I completely forgot but that, that the, life like, the life steal got yeah. baked into the kit instead of being on a talent. That it's easy to forget. Is uh, one of those things, again, with the health pool you had mentioned, with the life steal and well, the amount of damage she was able to do and the amount of crossfires that you got. Yeah. Burn through shields, burn through health bars all day, every day. And keep yourself, what, 10, 2, and 12 as they go forward. Cats on Mars win game number one. But question is whether or not they can do it two more times. And we'll find out right after this. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Console League. Well, on the back of some roster swaps from uh, the roster that I kind of ran down on the pregame desk, Cats on Mars apparently looking even better than they did before. 4-0 on Frog Isle. Everything seemingly going in their favor on that one, and a great way to start the day for the Cats on Mars. Absolutely. Kresnik, fun one to watch. There were yeah. some min-max moments. Nose to Knesset mine killed. Don't often get to see those. Yeah, I, uh, I I was reacting to that. I'm kind of sad I wasn't on the cast <laughs> for that. But it's sometimes you don't know. Sometimes That's true. you don't know. You know, you're, the damage is so little. G Pan was just looking around trying to find the mine, and unfortunately for him, just one one the second too late. Him. The mine found him <laughs> before he could. The oppressor mine uh, oppressed him to the respawn. But still, Cats on Mars looking yep. looking really solid there. I think really they kept the pressure off of their Knesset. It was yep. really hard for uh, for excuse me for them to get in at all to get that pressure on. So. Good play by them. And I want to see what map they're bringing to after Frog Isle, because it's kind of a yeah. unique map. So seeing where they try to take it from here, where Wasted Potential want to go. Uh, looks like Bright Marsh. Bright so, Marsh, yeah, sure. A standard map. Uh, snowball -y, like we mentioned before. Very flat, so you can play a lot of different things. So kind of resetting after that first map. And uh, reset is exactly what Wasted Potential need to do now. 4-0, nothing to stand on from that first one. So What's that? I just realized oh. it's probably Cats on Mars' oh, okay. pick, so. Nothing to stand on in that uh, in, in that first game except an oppressor mine on the opposite side. Cats on Mars with the uh, the first two bands are going to get rid of Atlas, get rid of Genos. Victor Talis, that hit scan priority for wasted potential off the board. Tyra, I mean, has, has been such Choose a force today. Carefully, Not going to do my whole spiel. I've said it a hundred times. Say it some more. Tyra is a good pick, and she makes people around her just a little bit better. On this map too, especially, because you kind of lock down the point with yeah. the firebomb, with the mark pressure. It's hard for the point you tanks to survive. And, and ours is one that has a shot, but not so much. And I like the Leon sure. to deal with the Tyra. We saw it earlier. 
where the Leon can kind of play on that far apartment side and get that burst to the door. But it's possible the tower just kind of stays out of the sight, you know, playing up in that window. It's a lot harder for Leon to make anything happen. Yeah, but is that Leon worth giving away a, a Barrack or a Makoa on the album? Would you rather maybe go Barrack or Makoa instead of a Leon? Makoa maybe over Barrack. I mean, they already have a point tank. Sure. So I could see maybe a Nara Makoa, but that opens you up to like a Sky, which we already saw earlier today. Right. Something else that's very strong against those high health pool My tanks. So I don't really disagree. I think if they give up Tyra Leon, that might be even worse. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Uh, the Leon on the opposite side would have been even more that's scary. Uh, Willow Grover round out the first four here uh, for wasted potential, indicating uh, maybe some group play there from them. Willow's been a great pick, honestly, kind of across yeah. the board today. Some success, some, some not so much, but always on. having some level of impact on the game. You're going to get Tyra. You won't get the Leon to pair with it, but you are going to pair it. A nice Vivian, and once those Sentinels come out and a hunting party mark is on somebody, they're going to cease to exist. It's going to be a harder comp to play Vivian into tank-wise, at least. She's normally tank Stay shred, but Inara doesn't get super affected by her, and Ash again, doesn't really, her shield doesn't right. matter as much. So maybe they just play hard point burn, kind of kite back to the tree. That's an option for them, but I don't know what else they can do. It's going to have to be a lot on the back of that Makoa aggression. The tree meaning Grover, or the tree meaning the tree on the map? Well, if they can get on into that <laughs> tree, the Grover, that's a lot better for them. <laughs> yeah, it would be. <laughs> uh, Cats on Mars feeling good, though, after game number one, looking to take their talents down to Bright Marsh for game number two. Well, the question is going to come down to what's better than a 10-2 and 12 Tyra, and can they top it? Hey. As Cats on Mars are going to be bringing that one back. So it's the potential oh are going to be doing their best to stall it out, stop it out, and get themselves a win here on Bright Marsh. But I mean, if you're going from one 4 OE map to another, Bright Marsh might be a dangerous place. Better know your stuff. That's kind of what I was saying last set as well. That was Bright Marsh was game three, and after the how snowbally game one was on Jaguar Falls, I was like, I don't know if this is <laughs> this is the play. We are going to see both the Opportunity Chaos and the Hunting Party. People are going to evaporate. The desk was right. This is very scary. MH Vivian actually on the appropriate champion this time around. And of course, Tyra to back it up. Tyra was enough last game. Imagine having both Tyra and Vivian in a PCL game. I was thinking just the only way you could convince me to take the, this Vivian player off of the Tyra is to, to put them on Vivian, where I believe their namesake would come through. Good damage, but again, waste of potential. They're even running around are together. the ones <laughs> that have uh, started off on the point 50% already garnished. Hand, baby. We've seen how this starts one more time, the same song and dance that they've done. The question is if they can hold on to it so far. No pressure onto an Ara. I think there's uh, definitely room to relocate and pressure Anara for sure. I mean... Vivian plus Hunting Party, that's how you melt. That's probably the only effective way to melt that character. Jeez. Grover missteps for a mere second, and he is evaporated. Look at that. So it's more of a game of, like, the floor is lava, wow. but it's not the floor necessarily that lets lava. It's just the line of sight that happens to be Tyra and Vivian. And if you happen to cross both of them at the same time, no, you're gone as of right now. Matched and surpassed here. Cats on Mars at 84% as they're going to be trying to zone it out. A lot of good damage on the Makoa looking for the kill. They're not going to be able to find it just yet. Crossfire almost charged up. Inhart on the side might be able to come through. Come but Cats on, on Mars, man. they're going to completely vacate the objective. Just kind of give that one away. I think that's. I think that was a misplay. I think they have a great composition to melt point frontliners. And I don't think... Wasted potential should have been able to grab that much on the objective, as well as you have to imagine in the first round, you have to be able to surmise that you're probably one of the first people to your ultimate. If you if you hit that, burn that Anara down, I think you can maybe turn that one around. I hate seeing people hold their ultimates, you know, in a point fight scenario like that in the first round. It's my statistic, bro. It's my fake stat. You <laughs> pop them, you're gonna win. You pop them, you win them. You beat everyone there. Nobody else has anything to contest you. I mean, they did, after a while, get the whirlwind online. But like you said, Crossfire was there, was ready, was waiting. All the Sentinels are going to come out. They're just going to try to regain some of this control, tie this up 1-1 if they can. And this is a good start to it. A minute and a half left to burn, and about 75% of the push still left to go. They haven't even hit what I would consider the hard choke points of Bright Marsh yet either. So. A lot of potential here for Cats on Mars. Maybe the warm-up period as they switch from Kinesa to Tyra and from Tyra to Vivian just to True. get them back in that kind of zone of, oh, what do I need to do? Right, just be aggressive. But with six deaths on Frog Isle and Kinesa, he had the most deaths on his team. That that guy definitely knew how to get aggressive. I want to <laughs> see, I want to see uh, 
I mean, his Knessa play, frankly, was a little bit more rambunctious than what I've seen from the Tyra so far. But that defensive point is still on the board for Cats on Mars, if they can hold this defense. They've done a damn good job of it so far. A certain Dominance is going to look to get this one started. G-Pan Velocity going to be able to get some shots, get the kill, but trades out his live crossfire. While it might come a little later than we expected, it's still going to be helpful. Higher Bomb, unfortunately, What's gets bounced backwards there <laughs> as it does not land on the Inara, but it doesn't matter. Vivian, Ian Hart all putting their names on the board. Five Streak and Six Street, respectively, as well. Remaining. Keep things going. 4-1 and 2, 3-0 -oh and 3. Kind of keeping the numbers rolling for them, keeping the deaths rolling for Wasted Potential and doing their best to make sure that this payload doesn't start rolling. Healing not too far apart. Grover's claiming the crown by about 10,000 so far. Nice hook on the Ash. We know her ultimate's down. We know she's a pretty good target. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 with a lot of way to go. I don't even know if anybody's going to be able to get here for the overtime touch. Well, they're going to be trying. One second left. Anara's around, but not going to be able to get it. It's a sad day for your team, though if you get overtime and you're standing on the objective <laughs> of all the places to be. It's not exactly where you want to go. And there was that lapse. I mean, look, Anara was so close to dead. Man. Ian Hart, it took him about three, five seconds, which is an eternity in Paladins. You pop a crossfire there, maybe you not only melt the Anara, maybe you melt some others as well. But it was unfortunate, clever pup, I think, a little too low. <laughs> so control just went the way of wasted potential, seconds. at least for round one. Pal just kind of popped there, man. That's That was both of his kills. That's all of his kills right there in that five-second window. He just <laughs> double popped somebody with precision five, called it a day. Four, Straight to morale three, boost, though, two, for Zumdel, as he's already hit the morale two mark, 96% on his ultimate. Absolutely going to have a ton of illusory rifts this game, akin to the crossfires of Frog Isle. That's one of the keys to victory. Just pure healing as it comes down. Going to be separated right here. Ancient Rage popped in person of Uranus. Going to get melted down, killed off, and G-Pan Velocity next on the chopping block. Melted down by this anchor, and that's wow. not all on his Jeez. list. He keeps going, and Clever Pup wants to keep melting him down. Oh, Has the hook. It. He's Ooh. ready for it in case he I thought he, he was going to hit that, bro. But he's just keeping him zoned. Like, no one wants to fight him. That was a hell of a fight. That started off kind of meh, popping that Ancient Rage to just kind of body block. But he turned it around. Let's look at the loadout, because I think he's running a bunch of Rampage movement speed. Once he got that one kill, yeah, he's running Rampage yeah, 4. He took off and absolutely leveraged that nicely. I, it's one of my favorite things to watch, like a Makoa who gets the one kill and then just takes off with Rampage. Reminds me of a train that is running out of control as of right now. Perfectly stunned to body block the entrance, a nice hook to stop the dash. And they're not even going to be able to get the nice touch. Stun. Just a step too late. Good control from Clever Pup, not only in the kills, but in the crowd control. Make sure Waste of Potential can't touch it down. Cats on Mars, much more controlling the second time, second time around. And now with two minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock, they are off to a good start to this push. I mean, really, truly. Other people, I'm sure, were hitting their buttons and doing stuff, but I think the only one that really mattered there was Makoa. He kind of dominated that first team fight, zoned people out, forced this Leon back into Kansas, and then made it back to the objective <laughs> to body block Ash, hit the hook, kill Inara. A lot got done there. Man. Clever Pup, 26,021. May not be the most original name ever seen. He's got six digits to identify himself, but he's definitely standing out with his play here on Bright Marsh. And at least part of it seems like it might be applicable. I was going to say, like, he's clever, so technically you get that part. I don't know. Either way, it's going to work out for him. A little bit of a, a stint here from Wasted Potentials. They get a couple kills in return. G Pan. Looking for the right angles to find some blast shots. Not connecting on a few in a row there. He's going to finally be able to lock them down. But there's going to be the illusory rift. That morale boost too paying its weight in gold right now to keep them in the fight. And Cats on Mars going to be able to start turning this fight around, get back on that payload, and push waste of potential back towards the base. On and on they go. Have a lot of time to get this one done as well. Big ultimate starting to come back online. Ancient Rage being the one, of course, that we're referencing here. Have to be careful around this. CC immunity to prevent the knock off the map. That's what I was most worried off. Another dredge anchor to cancel out. Yet another shoulder bash. And just keeping him under control. Does run out of his ancient rage. But look where everyone is standing. They're all locked back in the base. Either backs literally against the wall or backs against the doors to try and keep them healed up. But no good line of sight. Nice seismic crash. Going to be able to get a little bit of stun, a little bit of control, and at least one kill on the Mr. Pickles. Vivian on the side, melting and doing whatever they can on the Jehovos. But it's been kind of intermixed with splash damage. Faith Flight going to go up into the air. And this is just looking for a zone. 
They don't necessarily have to back off this Fae Flat. I mean, they have Tyra Vivian. Oh, man, a lot of damage connecting there. I think that was a Presence and a Grover Axe at the same time. Vivian just got knocked in the next week. Ten seconds on the clock. A lot spent from Cats on Mars, and this is not exactly looking super likely to find its way home. Especially with that kill onto Tyra. It's looking like it's going to come down. Not even able to get the overtime. Even though Barrick and Makoa, they're like hanging around. They're just there, but it's not quite enough. And I believe this is going to be just a nice axis. And that's one of the things that you, uh, you tend to forget about about Grover. He does a lot of damage when you give him the opportunity to. Yeah. And as of right now, he's, I believe, in the case for two of those three kills onto Vivian. I feel so weird saying Vivian this often because I'm like, I'm supposed to, I'm like, say the player name, just talk about him. But that is the player name. And it's messing with me. M.H. Vivian. That's that's the full commitment. You know, you get those every once Five, in a while. The guy that just four, can't separate himself three, from a champion two, or a play style. One. Both healers in a morale boost at this point. A little bit of bulldozer, actually, I guess, just to get rid of these clones and these turrets, whatever else it is that Jehovos is having to deal with on the objective. Struggle for sure. Not a lot of ultimates online, period. So nobody's going to have an outright super advantage. Barrick, somebody's on their horse contesting the objective at the moment. <laughs> I think that's Makoa. No? Who was that? Was that Tyra? That is Somebody was on their answered. horse. Someone's the still point. mounted. Hanging around over there. But Cats on Mars are the ones losing right now. Ooh. It kind of took a little bit of time to Ooh. snowball, but that's going to be five. Not fully clean kills there. There's a little bit of return. But it was Barrick who was just hanging around on the objective on his mount. Has the dome shield. Crossfire both available. Illusory Rift coming up in a second. It's 54% and rising still for Wasted Potential as they go for the zone. Just like how Clever Pup kind of locked down last round. I think you could say Ash having a lockdown performance. A great ultimate. Here comes the Illusory Rift and the take back attempt. A one for one exchange to kick it off. Going to be good. Dome Shield drop just to try and get a little bit of zone. 77% charged on this seismic crash. And right now, Jehovah's doing whatever he can to try and stay well out of this range, which is going to be the Makoa. Beautiful hook sets him up for the kill, but it's three members of Wasted Potential dancing around the side, trying to figure out where they want to go and how they want to reassess this aggression. Ian Hart, some damage being thrown out on the POW. But so far, nothing big. A little bit of aggression coming through from Cats on Mars, and they just zoning them out. Yep, there's the Ancient Rage on the high ground, chasing people out. Well, I'm not sure if it's actually getting any kills here. This has not been a super high value Ancient Rage. Fae Flight is here to combat it as well. 1v1 happening. Willow is going to take it, and Cats on Mars are going to take the objective. Meanwhile, frankly, a good fight for how much I felt Wasted Potential kind of dominated at least the early half. I mean, probably one of the best fights to even end it from Wasted Potential. I mean, they're getting kills. They were in control. It just happened to be the Cats on Mars were the ones that were still standing on the objective when all the bodies were dropped. And while you can kill off the carries, maybe even the support, it wasn't enough in control to keep things rolling forward. So two minutes left on the clock. Potentially able to close this out, set themselves up 2-0 in the set. Whoa. Whereas so far on Bright Marsh, actually, we've not seen a single payload convert. So waste of potential. Hoping to keep that nice. as a statistic. Oh, Vivian was there. Actually does manage to clean up that kill. Get an opportunity in Chaos ramped up as she moves around the corner here, trying to pressure Inara. All of her cooldowns spent. Willow's kind of on an island now. Whether or not she realizes it, a bit of a mispositioning there. Peel for Vivian. Get them out. This could be a potential snowball objective here. Nice shell shield to provide the peel. Going to be really good. Standing oh, around. No. Vivian going to go down. He's stunned out himself. But Makoa still living as of right now. But it's not going to take too long before Mr. Pickles, Clever Pup, both get burned away. Ian Hart next on the list. Wow. And everyone else is just turn tail and run if you're still alive. Get out of there while you can. It's wasted potential. They're going to get aggressive. And this is one of my favorite kinds of zones. Just don't let up on it. Let them get let pushed back into base and give them exactly what you need to to find a defense. So I guess that means Cauterize 3 is online because the illusory rift got popped there and then four people immediately died. So healing falls off, folks. That's, that's pretty much the size of it. And Ash has reached that Cauterize 3 mark. She's going to be the primary culprit of applying that debuff, I think, across the board. 600 HPS is a lot, and that's what Illusory Rift is going to provide to you, but when you cut that down to 60 HPS, that's more like a loadout card at level 3 or something like that. It's not enough to get you through these team fights. Yes, it's global. Yes, it's team-wide. Yes, it's quick to charge, but it just falls off late game. A couple of good shots there. Good hook as well. Keep Clever Pup into this. There's 20 seconds left to get back to the payload. Keep yourself in control. 
and keep things moving forward to you. Again, looking to close out the game right now. These cats on Mars, if they can get back, find themselves some good control. A little good amount of poke damage on the Willow. Nothing to seal the deal just yet. But these marks are probably where Tyra is going to be the most effective. Ancient Rage is available. So Clever Pup's in a good position to potentially get super aggressive. Uh oh, one frontliner goes down. Ancient Rage is ready. No reason to pop it immediately here. Dead zoned out. Nara trying to push around, get some pressure back. Trading out one for one now. Barrack falls in place of Ash. It's going to be close here. It's come down to who spends what. Well, Fate Flight going to get popped immediately. That's going to lead to almost another kill instantly as the double kill comes down. G-Pan doing anything and everything in his power to stop this from coming through as of right now. There's going to be a third one right at the end. Vivian will trade out. And it's those moments, I mean, when it comes down to it, that are going to make the big difference is popping your ult, but in a time that it might be more worthwhile. Fae Flight is used. Cert Dominance is only halfway there. Seismic Crash, 80%. Enlightenment's getting close. Whirlwind is there. But again, same conversation as Illusory Rift, but it is 2,500 HPS at base. So after Cauterize 3, it's still 250 HPS. It's, it's still pretty sizable. It's still going to help sway a fight a little bit. But overall, you have to be very careful as a support this late in the game to make sure you're not dumping a ton of healing into Caught 3s. Yeah. Ancient Rage, Illusory Rift, Dome Shield, as well as Crossfire and Sentinels about you know, halfway there. And those aren't critical for the team fight. I think Cats on Mars have the critical ultimates that they need to win the team fight. All the question is whether or not they have the critical fight. A lot of pressure on Ian Hart. Almost immediately, Dome Shield get, gets forced out. Mr. Pickles just trying to stay alive in this case. A nice hook, but it's not going to be able to afford too much. His Ancient Rage is maintained, but wasted potential, much like every single round, have started off on the point, in control of the point, and they're Let's getting the go. kills they Kill need to both. keep it. Kill them both here. I mean, Fate Flight is down. We know Flutter is down as well. There's one. Rampage activated. Extra movement speed for Mako as he rips through a Nar 2. <laughs> just running them down Let's go. left and right. And that forces that's right, Grover boy. to just yeah, jump Yeah, that's right. Uh, he just wanted to go swimming. And don't you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the zone's going to be good. At least at the start, 69% picked up for Waste of Potential, though. They maintain and charge up some of those ults. Whirlwind came through, yeah. but they've got Seismic Crash, and they've got an Enlightenment. No matter what, someone's walking out of here with a win. The question is, is it going to be Cats on Mars as they maintain it right now? And a lot of that's going to depend on Jehovah's half-health lower drops before he can even get anything done on the objective. And, and there's nobody to even contest it. Hello? That was I, I felt like there was a build-up. They were going to do something, and then... <laughs> They had Seismic Crash, they had Enlightenment, they had a couple little things to get in there. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes that's the way it goes, man. In ours, no mobility, you get dismounted yeah, yeah. in an inopportune spot. And that's just what you have to deal with. It is like trudging through the mud, right? <laughs> it's just you have nothing, you can't lift your legs up. You, I guess at some point in there, someone put 20-pound ankle weights on yeah. each leg. Like, it's just very difficult as an R to get back to the objective in that kind of zone. And they just fielded pretty much everywhere from left to right on Bright Marsh to make sure no one could touch down. It was a good zone and you need to be able to guess like, all right, they're respawning now. We're at like 60%. And sometimes you can go for like that suicide zone where yeah. like four people literally, they're just, they're going to zone with the intention of losing their life and buying as much time as possible. Going all in on that strategy. If it doesn't work, you pretty much lose the game there. But again, Cats on Mars don't even need to go that extreme to get it done. 131,000 damage from Ian Hart, 124,000 there from Vivian. Only beat as by Vivian, I guess, Wiz Pow at 127, kind of right in the middle of the two carries on Cats on Mars. But objective time in favor of Cats on Mars. Jehovah's did what he could. And while you have three and eight on one side, you get five and 10 on the other. So the tank's kind of going, I want to yeah. say death for death, really, and kill for kill. It did really come down to the control that the carries brought. And, well, Clever Pup. Absolutely. 86K for both of those frontliners. Clever Pup, 10 and 7. Kind of outstacking the, the 6 and 10 for the aggro frontliner on the other side. Critical kills with Ancient Rage. And you'll see, as soon as he gets that kill, he's kind of taken off. It allows you to close the gap. That's the only limitation Ancient Rage has, is your literally melee range. Also, shout out to the 800 damage hunting party Ancient Rage does. Very, very <laughs> effective there. You love to see it. Clever Pup, though, this was a good one as well. Knowing the cooldowns or Willow are down, knowing that he could get aggressive onto the Sonara. I mean, this was this was the team fight. That's the ultimate. It's really a, such a critical part of your fight. If you can't get value for that ultimate, the goal becomes much less scary to deal with. And I think just a highlight reel of a selling point for Rampage. Like, if you are ever oh, yeah. wondering it's why so you should pick it on Makoa, 
it's those moments where it's just cool. I'm going to get that guy who I hooked in and then run literally anyone <laughs> and everyone else down, go for the zone. Oh, well, they win Bright Marsh. It was 4-3, so a lot more contested yeah. from Wasted Potential this time around. But it really was pretty much. It felt like in their pocket the whole time. A couple of slip-ups there, especially with the first round. But they managed to find themselves up 2-0 as it is right now. So we're going to find out whether or not Cats on Mars can close it out in three or if they push it to a four-game set right after this. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Console League. Um, Bright Marsh, Cats on Mars make it two and are now one game away from rounding out this PCL Monday. Looking convincing. Some bright spots, though, from Wasted Potential. But uh, what happened there, Chris? What, what allowed Cats on Mars to, to kind of run away with that one? I think it was their alt management. I, yeah. I like Every Leviathan that came out of Clever Pup was super influential, getting two kills while the rest of his team collapsed yeah. on the space. They were always there to follow up. So I think that really just turned it. I saw some late assert sure. dominances, too, in the push to not have it right away from the mid-fight. So alt management really can turn a game around, and I think that's a great example of it. It's so easy to you know, use them at the wrong time or yeah. you think you're using it right and then you know, maybe you should have used it at a different time. So, so having a team that can cohesively kind of come together, use it all very well. And that, that indicates good teamwork as well. I mean, Counts on Mars, a team that, that are growing, as I mentioned, making some swaps into this week from the previous week. So obviously so showing that some of the changes they've made uh, were for a good reason. Now one map away from sealing out this set. Let's See what map number three is going to be. See if they can do it on Jaguar Falls. Game one, convincing 4-0. Game two, a little bit closer, 4-3. Jaguar Falls, though. Seen it a few times today, actually. Some interesting picks. Saw a little emoji in our last set. I don't yep. know if we're uh, I don't know if we're banking on another emoji, but uh, I guess it could happen. It's definitely not a safe bet. It's kind of a one <laughs> one to a thousand, but I mean maybe it could Pay be more off popular. Big time. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna hit it big if they do get emoji. But not surprised that they'd want to go back here. And actually, mm -hmm. interesting, they picked second pick again too. So they sure. want—they just want to repeat. They thought, hey, we're close enough. We'll just right. bring it right back. This is the closest thing to a run back you can get in Paladins where you can't do the same map twice in a row. So interesting by them. Similar start ban-wise. Tyro the gods still going to go to Cats on Our Mars. So is a damage mark a start really powerful as we know on this yep. close map. And point control is, is really hard to deal with on this map like I saw earlier with the triple tank draft. Sure. Tyro. Well, they're, uh, they're going to have a little bit of an easier time controlling it on the waste of potential bullshit. side of things, especially with a, uh, an Astral Luminary mark on that uh, the the giant turtle shield. in the form of Makoa. See him a lot. I mean, 71% win rate in this region of the console league. I imagine that's that's somewhat consistent uh, across the board. I mean, above 50 would be my guess for Makoa. He's such a controlling yeah. and strong champion here and yet, in this case. And yet he still escapes the ban wave. I will Every fight single I guess, time. I mean, this is always the conversation that ends up being had. Like, is, is Talus really worth banning over a Makoa? Is Victor really worth banning over Victor a Makoa? On, Victor on console, maybe. And sure. I still cannot agree with Talus. I know it gets banned every time. I mean, and there has, strong, it has to come out in scrims, right? There has right. to be a reason. I mean, but, it, I guess it's strong, but like, Makoa's winning 71% <laughs> of his games. There's, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I truly don't know, because I don't know what the scrim stats are, all that, but there's no way die. Talus wins there is no middle that down. much. Maybe he does. Maybe I'm way off base here. But at, at any rate, they're not going to not gonna want to play around that one. Makoa just fine, though, in this case, pairing that Genos with a, a Koga and a Barrack, so lots of good targets for those astral marks. Cats on Mars, though, round out their composition. 
I really actually really like the Koga, by the way, for wasted potential yeah. because of the ability to cleanse the Tyro Marks. Sure. You can, if a Mark accidentally goes on the Koga, he can immediately dash. No Primal might refund. This duration's completely killed. So yeah. it's a really good way to waste those cooldowns if the focus fire is right. But that also goes on the Tyra too, right? If the Tyra right. on Council Mars is marking the Koga knowing this, then. Right. You know, I that failing the there is what the reason why sure. it would work. It's a good, very good point, though, to make. Uh, something to keep your eyes on as we move into this one. Five up, five down for both squads. Barrick, Vivian rounded out for wasted potential. It's always so hard to predict because it so often comes down to just who plays the best. But do Cats on Mars have a composition that could win here? I think they do, but I like the damage boost Koga Vivian from Wasted sure. Potential. And and they, they showed a lot of potential in yeah. that last game on Bright Marsh. Let's see if they can make good on some of that potential as so we head down to game three. The keys to victory are there for wasted potential right now. I mean, that is a winning draft if I've ever seen one. Definitely. The question is just going to come down to exactly what Dave said, who plays it better at the end of the day. And potentially, this could be the end of the day if Cats on Mars win. It's not even necessarily a bad way to go on Jaguar Falls either. I think both these teams have comps that could win. But there's like kind of this Momentum can work against you sometimes if you're used to playing and dominating a certain way. And then you see Wasted Potential pull out a draft like this that admittedly has a bit more offensive potency, I think, than some of their drafts have had in the games prior. So if Cats on Mars play the same kind of style that has gotten them success in these prior two games, they could sort of hit a uh, spiked brick wall, if you will, against some of these more potent uh, offensive players for Wasted Potential this time around. You can see Pow just melting anyone and everyone that happens to stand in front of him. Doesn't quite get the kill onto the Inara, guns, but does immediately get the kill onto the Khan. And yeah, I mean, for water guns, again, they, guns, they hurt pretty hard. And it's just melting. I mean, he's gone uh, essentially the perfect flank route until that very end when he dies off. He was going through exactly the way you want to see your flank go through. Nobody else is even really involved on his team. So as far as I'm concerned, by himself, that Koga is either killing or distracting the entirety of Cats on Mars. That is so much value. Waste of Potential have cashed in on that about as well as they were able to the tune of about 75% on the objective. Now having to concede the objective to the superiority of Inara when it comes to picking a spot that you want and holding it down. I mean, this just feels like the same thing we've seen at the beginning Pop of every it. round. Wasted Potential are really, really good at putting their foot first on the point. The question is, how well can they hold the mid? Right now, it's going to be three kills. Pow, two off screen. G-Pan going to come through, and with a little help from the Makoa, find himself two as well. That 99% is going to turn into 100. Wasted Potential find themselves up right now. And I mean, again, Jag Falls, like, we're, we're following the theme, a bunch of maps that you can 4 0 on, but this is probably the best one to start off in control. Yeah, a lot of the damage pouring out from this Koga at the moment. Again, not the same player, but still sitting on the crossfire when it's up. I think there was a small light at the end of the tunnel. You might have been able to turn that one around, save your con's life, and potentially be able to 2v4 that or 2v2 that one back from there on out. But again, spilt milk at this point. A lot of ultimates starting to become available. Sentinel's already expended. Again, these are ones you want to just pop the second they're up because they'll actually start charging the next set, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. Now 15% gonna grow fast. Wow. Oh, unless you get melted like that, that crossfire just burns through Vivian, helps him find a double kill right there, keeps everyone on Wasted Potential off of this payload. Gonna have to deal with Pow as he tries to retreat right now. But as of, well, the way things are going, a good stagger. And I hope they were going for a stagger, because otherwise that was a lot of shots missed. But either way, <laughs> they're going to be in control. They have a minute, 20 seconds left to burn down the clock. And waste of potential. Have to figure out how to crack through this eggshell. They've got ultimates to do it. Again, overpower can kind of emergency break. And overpower is talked about a lot, like being better at certain points of certain maps. On Jaguar Falls, you can pretty much always just throw somebody off. Cyclone Strike's going to be good for one, and he's going to live. And Koga's getting a buff in exactly that regard. Not only are these Shadow Steps going to carry more of your momentum as you're dashing through the air, but you will be less vulnerable coming out of Cyclone Strike, making it harder to stop you. And it's, I don't know, we'll see how it plays yeah. out. But I remember that specifically being like one of the things that you, know, you had to think about as Koga, like one of the balancing points, if you will. 
about you can't just like kill somebody for free and then just poof away and smoke. But we'll see. Now he's going to be able to come through again. Survivable is the right word for it. Just going to live a little longer afterward or be immune a little longer at the tail end of that. But as of right now, even with that vulnerability, Pal's been able to make it out. And at least cause a little bit of trouble here and there. A little bit of damage up the stairs, but not enough to lock anyone down. The payload pretty heavily guarded right Whoa. now by Gats on Mars. And Nara Hello. getting aggressive, going to even wall it off, looking for G-Pan. Sentinel's going to be popped, and now they're going to be coming out. Damage galore for Vivian, and that should Reload. be a kill onto Nara. Reload, my guy. Walking up to that fight with six bullets in your clip. Come on! <laughs> I know no brain, no aim, you know, Vivian at main and all that, but you gotta you gotta pay attention to that. That's the one thing you have to maintain and manage is Vivian is your ammo. You have 70 shots. And when she and came somehow out, he managed to hold six. You didn't even need to do that. You had loadout cards to just make basically infinite ammo Vivian. I that was crazy. You remember that? <laughs> that was one of my favorite things was like when that came out, we were like, I wonder how much you could do. And even though it's unrealistic, I'd maxed both of the cards. I fired for like a minute and a half yeah. without having to reload. You would get an average of like 120 to 150 shots out of those it, uh, cards. It was a long time. Yeah. You did not have That's to worry That's on too average, much. too, because it was RNG, so sometimes you'd be better off, sometimes you'd be worse. And then if you really got into a rhythm, man, it just felt like, do I ever do I ever have to stop left-clicking here? Is this? Five, and it made it much better four, for Opportunity and Chaos, three, obviously. That was yeah. some great synergy there. One. I'm going to fire for 30 seconds, so after the first two, the next 28 <laughs> seconds, I'm going to do nothing but bonus damage. And you're going to feel that one all the way home. This is Cats on Mars right now. Trying to figure out what they did wrong last time. Mr. Pickle is going to be able to hit the seismic crash. Burns down Jehovah's almost immediately. And Pow wow. tries to replicate his beginning the last round and is met with a ironclad wall clamping down on him in front of him. Yeah, everybody is... Kind of calling this one quits, hopping off the map, calling it a full reset. A lot of ultimates available for wasted potential, but I'm looking at overpower. I'm looking at enlightenment just about to come up for cats on Mars. If they use these two resources effectively, there's really not going to be much of a fight. And the big thing about control, I was ah. going to say, maybe you use your overpower here. You didn't even have to. Barrack Dome Shield dropped on the objective to get a little bit of zone, but they're only at 18% right now for wasted potential. Sentinel's doing a lot of damage to cover Pup. We're going to be able to zone him out, but. Velocity loses his life just as quickly, not even warranting the overpower right now. Going to be able to go in for the commander's grab, keep this barrack under wraps, and they are burning him down one, two, three in a row here. Ian Hart doing everything in his power to make sure they stay down and they maintain the overpower. They're about to have the crossfire. Good fight from Cats on Mars. That's big. Clever Pup might be looking to use his overpower here. You can see nothing but blue skies to the left. He tries for it. You hype him up. And I that's tried. what we get. Can't say I didn't try. I gave him my best shot there. Realistically, didn't even probably need to use that on Vivian there. I think she was pretty low HP, actually retreating into that little hut. So could have probably walked that one down, thrown off a Koa or someone. But again, that's just splitting hairs. That's just what I'm here to do. 97, 99, quick crossfire is going to top off. Rarely do you see teams fight so heavily over, like, no man's land here, just out in the middle of this payload bash. But... You got to make your stand somewhere, and you make your stand kind of based on where you feel your comp's sort of optimal range is, so sometimes that's just the way she goes. I don't think I've seen a more perfectly placed Cyclone Strike that was Did met nothing. with no damage really <laughs> being dealt whatsoever. Like, it was just really good healing from the Grover. No one seemed to care. And is a little low right now, but it's not really Koga. Ooh, that's the threat. He's, he's going to be able to come it. around. He's going to get the dashes. He's looking for her, but the turn speed is just a little too low. He's not connecting these shots, and that's going to be good shots from them. Ian Hart does go down, but unfortunately for Koga, he's not going to be the star of the show. To be fair, he lasted a lot longer than I thought he was going in on that. Jeez. Also baited out the Enlightenment, and an Ancient Rage steals the show, shuts it all down. A lot of that damage sponsored by Vivian and her Sentinels. North of 2K, once she gets rolling, the Sentinels are firing. The bonus damage is there. I mean, she's just going to rip you to pieces. And a good zone as well. Wasted potential fighting around where the objective would have been at the start of the round. They're using the map to their advantage just to slow down and burn as much time off of the clock as possible. Push the line of scrimmage as far over towards Cats on Mars as he can before they push it right back in your face. They're going to be able to get here. 25 seconds left on the clock. 
but they are going to be able to touch the payload, keep it going, at least keep it in overtime in the next 20 seconds. But it's moments like that, the hook connecting on the Clever Pup that might make the big difference. It's going to be a big kill. Person of Uranus getting low himself. So a little bit of back and forth between the two front lines. But ultimately, it's going to be leaning towards Cats on Mars in terms of their control. Dome Shield going to get dropped, and he's incredibly low, but the first one to fall is going to be the support for Wasted Potential Genos off the bill. Yeah, trying to actually lock this barrack down before the Dome Shield falls. Whirlwind is going to push through what I believe to be Cauterize 2 at the very least. So still a decent amount of healing and making it through to Inara. Overpower is available, but it looks like Cats on Mars want to get it done without spending a damn thing, and they will. I mean, that's probably the best case scenario. It is. You walk it in, you keep your Seismic Crash, you keep your Overpower, and you're 88% on both Enlightenment and your Crossfire. It, it's almost literally a win-win. They win the mid, they win the point push, they find the convert, they find themselves up 3-1, and now Wasted Potential have their backs fully against the wall. One more mid fight is all it takes for Cats on Mars here to potentially close out the set and close out the day. Resources aplenty here for Cats on Mars to win their set 4-1. Be a clean 3-0 slate on the map differential Five, graphic as well. Three, so always good three, for your standings, two, always good for your ability one. to potentially contest the top spot because the top spot is what you need in console. We've got four regions, two console region combinations in total, meaning if you're not number one in your pond, then you're not coming to land. So they know what they have to do. They have to get out of this one cleanly. Well, Pan made has through time and space available. Hasn't used it. Ian Hart going to be the first one burned down. Healing on the Jehovah's going to keep him in the fight a little bit longer. Use your and ults. They are collapsing, potentially ults. pincering Use into your ults. Cats on Mars. As no ults have been popped just yet. Well, there's the overpower. Oh, and while no. it does get used, it's not going to work not out for what him. I meant. And unfortunately, not this Makoa <laughs> and everybody is just melting on the side. Not even going to let him here, jump. Boy. That's a good zone. Oh, no, dude. Comeback mechanic, stagger. already 80%. Only gets off an unsuccessful overpower. Just mismanaged by Cats on Mars. I mean, you got to come out, you got to strike first with all of those resources. Get yourself in the driver's seat early. Make your opponent respond. Don't You don't want to be the one against the ropes, getting hit in the face, trying to put a plan together and get everyone on the same page and then execute on that plan. It's much better to just get in there, do you think makes them react? Yeah, again, another perfect Cyclone Strike that comes through this time, resulting in some kills. Pow, really starting this one off perfect for the team. Everyone is going to be down. That's a team wipe. And Cats on Mars are going to need, well, one more second before anyone respawns. Khan is probably going to hang out in the base for a little bit. There's a minute 45 left on the clock, and they're 75% of the way through. So this is probably the best chance to tie this up for Wasted Potential. They just want to kind of keep them pressured out. They're about to have Dome Shield. They're about to have Sentinels. But ideally, they don't have to pop anything if they move this one the next 20 feet. Ooh, nice shots here from the back line from Ian Hart. Get a little bit of that Kinesa in game number one. Now playing a baby version of the character. Nice from distance, 11. You can see almost 1,200. 1,200 is the absolute max precision can do. Or presence, excuse me. And Ian Hart almost hits it right there for us. This Koga Guns are very misleading for yeah. the amount of damage they do when you're not watching him. Oh, yeah, you just hear the water, and you're like, okay, someone's splashing in a kiddie pool over there. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And then you watch as, well, if you're Leon in this case, your health bar just disappears underneath you. But they managed to hold 50 seconds left. The payload pushed back more towards a choke point here with some good shielding, some good movement coming down from Cats on Mars. They've charged up their ults. And again, ideally, much like Wasted Potential, you'd like to be able to do this without using any of them. But if you have to, expect to see potentially Dome Shield, maybe some Sentinels, maybe a three time and space come through, especially with a kill on Clever Pop. Ooh, almost a kill on a Tyra as well, but Ian Hart makes sure he gets in there, trades that one out. Inara pushing forward to try and claim Makoa's life. Ian Hart's going to lose his, but again, everything that the offense gets, the defense responds fairly quickly on. Only 17 left on the clock. G-Pan ripping up over the top of this staircase, but is met with firepower in kind. 
and is going to try to come through, try to deal as much damage to this Khan as they can, and he's going to be low, and that shield is going to melt, but luckily Battle Shout Healing is going to be able to come through and keep them going, but Overtime will be triggered here for Wasted Potential as they're going to be able to stand on one-for-one one trade as of right now. The shots are coming out. It's going to trade to the two-for-one. You're going to be looking at the Ooh. Enlightenment coming through. Ian Hart doing whatever he can to keep this rolling forward for his team. Stop Person of Uranus. Stop G-Pan from dealing as much damage and keep your Inara alive, but they still got a support behind them, and it's still moving forward ever so slightly. Their respawns are coming in now. The defender's advantage is in full swing. The reinforcements get there. The cavalry has arrived. MH Vivian claims two more lives, and that is that. Vivian respawns, kind of stretches out their shoulders, comes out, and just is like, all right, let's get three. Finds them all, and there's that hook. Again, the one God of stagger. the best staggers. If you jump off of there, you have what? I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's two, three seconds faster there for the Inara. Well, that's two or three seconds earlier you have to deal with her. Two or three seconds she could have been on. The I point mean, in look, the mid fight. Look at the fight we just watched. That, that seconds making a difference. The uh, the yeah. reinforcements for wasted potential, aka the offensive cavalry, was on their horses, kind of like breaching under Three, that underpass, two, about to get involved in the fight. But just a couple of seconds made all the difference. They weren't quite there in time, and the defender's advantage was enough to force this one to a 3-2. Traveling around with Makoa, gonna go statue side, almost immediately half health. The shield is gone, and he's gonna be forced to pop the Ancient Rage, but it's not doing anything. That crossfire is melting him. He's gonna go in for the smack, so they get the kill at the end of the day, but it is going to be all for the Tyra to make that trade worth it. Ooh, Cyclone Strike here looks good for killing a Grover, and it will be Pow gets out unscathed as well, trying to find a second kill, and Lightman nice juked dash. out by that dash. Very nicely done. Just being able to find that little bit of control from Pow. It's been good. 96 health for Mr. Pickles. And literally a sneeze right now would just deal it. And he Pow's going to be able to find it, ah! move forward. They have half comeback mechanic enabled here for wasted potential. So <laughs> every second is going to count. That 79% is going to close in on 100. I think quickly enough that they, there's not going to be a touch. You know, I saw that wall go up, and I'm like, there's one character in the game that climbs walls. <laughs> And he's right behind you already. <laughs> right up and over that wall. Koga cleans up the kill onto Inara. Just not the right tool for the job, it seems. We're forced to a 3-3. Wasted potential could actually end the game. Here and now, if they can just convert this offense. Going to be trying to keep things rolling. Mr. Pickles is at half healthy and heart one for one. And that seems just to be the way that Koga and Inara, or Leon, are going so far today. It's just, I'm going to find you, but they're going to find me. Your team's always going to be ready to help you. As right now, Cats on Mars are trying to figure out the best way to stall this. Last time, at about a minute and 45, they were just as far, maybe a little further in the push. So Wasted Potential have been stalled further ahead. The question is whether or not it's going to happen, because there's a lot of melting health bars inside of Cats on Mars, and Ara almost gone and is now. Ooh, Jehovah's starting to get into the swing of things here. Three for nothing. The exchange for the offense looking good as they set up for conversion. Payload inching its way towards striking distance. They'll have to put it together one more time if they want to force a game four. But so far, so good. They're walking it forward, waste of potential. So far, no one trying to stall him out. Wall's going to go up Bang. through time and space, going to find the shot in the back line. Pow, going to be able to find himself a kill as well. Mr. Pickles is incredibly low, going to get burned down. And now it's up to the carries, but it's just not enough health, even though you see Khan in the back. Waste of potential finally find themselves a W, put themselves up on the board, and they keep themselves alive in the set at least for a little bit longer. Big connection with the snipe there from Genos. I mean, that's... Such a cherry on top usually, or in this case, a nail in the coffin for Cats on Mars, forcing that game number four. When you're just starting to kind of get in the swing, you have your game plan, and then a critical piece of the game plan is removed just like that. Sometimes it's just impossible to come back from. I mean, it's just so essential, I think, really, from Koga is what we saw, where he just found a lot of kills. When they finally used their ults at the end as well, I think that was the only through time and space I caught, and it was like the only one I saw connect, but yeah. it was able to find itself a kill and a big one at that. Getting a delete button for a Leon is a good way to start off a fight. I mean, it's hard to argue against 176,000 damage from the Vivian. Yeah, that's a problem. 123K on a flanker, on a short-range flanker, too. I think yeah. that's what speaks volumes about that, is that the character is still window-based. Like, he doesn't do well from mid to long range. Kind of has to be up in your face. Has to be getting that healing. There's a lot there. 
uh, that Ian Hart had to deal with. 15 and 9, efficient, efficient slash line. Being able to kind of keep things sorry, rolling pal, for him. Sorry. It's uh, what, 14 and 12 there as he comes through. And again, a lot of strength coming down from him, a lot of strength coming down from G Pan as well. As just keep their best foot forward. But at the end of the day, I mean, there was a lot of space that was garnished and created. Like, Jehovah's had a much better game this game than he did on the Inara last game. And while it came through, I think Ban made, again, of the three kills, one of them was the most important one at the end where it just yeah, eliminated Ian Hart almost instantly. True, true, true. Now managing to get in there a lot on that Koga. Died a lot for it, so again, not exactly the efficient slash line. That I thought that might have been. But making sure that he stayed involved and found a way to find damage. And Jaguar Falls, one of the better maps for a character like Koga, who operates at about that distance. You know what I mean? He can stay here, shoot down to the point, kind of move out. Here's that funny little, oh, I thought that was when the wall went up, and he just went right on over it. Nice shadow steps as well. Juked a couple of ultimates with those bad boys. Overall, a great performance. And good Cyclone Strike timing. There were a lot of moments yeah. where, you know, I, like this one, I believe he actually gets a kill. Some of the times he, he would find three people, get them all in there, and you wouldn't see any damage, but it'd be like, that was a cool ult, whether or not it did the damage. Kind of like <laughs> when you see like a really cool Zen spite, it's like, yeah, you tried, buddy, but it looked cool while you did it. And I think that's really the points that are going to be made for him there. <laughs> the Thousand Hands Guild it. needs to train their ultimates a, a little bit stronger. I They're think. just They look flashy as hell. <laughs> They spend all of their time on style. They're yeah. just like, yeah, you know, I think uh, I think if you jump in the air a little higher, that yeah. would probably work better. Or, like, spin around Hit a little 360 more. 360 for sure. Maybe a backflip on your way out. But uh, you're going to have to work on the damage. Either way, it is going to be wasted potential putting themselves up. Now it's 2-1 in favor of Cats on Mars. They're, just, they're still trying to close it out. Wasted potential are one step closer, potentially turning it back in their favor. We'll find out if they have more right after this. The Paladins Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Game three now in the books. And what a performance there from Wasted Potential. You lose back-to-back -to -back tough games. You fight back in a big way, especially on Jaguar Falls. And they look good doing it, Kresnik. The, uh, the Koga was something that you highlighted in the pregame. You, you pair it with, you know, the Genos on the back end of it. That extra damage amp looked really good here. Yeah, the Koga performed, I think, phenomenally. One of the bigger things for me, yes, it cleansed the Tyra Mark. It mm. had that kind of counterplay. But sure. usually when you see that pick, you're not thinking, oh, these Cyclone Strikes are going to look great. Cyclone Strike is almost like a just a sustainability. It'll keep you alive right. in the back line longer. But every single one was finding a kill, was getting him out of a situation that otherwise would have been bad. So props for that specifically, because Cyclone Strike is a very hard ultimate to utilize like that. If you look at that game, is it the, the Koga? That's kind of the difference maker in your eyes. The Makoa was a big topic of mm -hmm. conversation before we jumped into it. Or do you think the draft as a whole just allowed Wasted Potential to finally make good on some of that potential? I think Makoa might have done more in general, sure. but Koga's the biggest storyline because it's not really as common of a pick, you know. But right. again, just the sustainability it brought, it drew so much attention away from the rest of the map. And, and that's absolutely what they needed. Map 3 in the books, though. Let's see what Map 4 has in store for us. Maybe see if Cats on Mars is going to be able to seal this one up on Stone Keep. Of course, uh, Makoa just as good on this map as, as maybe any other oh, map. Yeah. So uh, I, I imagine still 
somewhat high priority in this one uh, as we see these teams move through the uh, the picks and bans here. Yeah, I'd expect. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna give a Makoa again after that last game. Yeah, I don't know. Because I mean, it uh, Makoa's been a story throughout the set too. I mean, a little Leviathan, some Bright Marsh, kind of sealed it up for Cats mm -hmm. on Mars throughout the game. So much alt value there. But we'll see how they go. Talisband again. Ash actually coming out for wasted potential. They don't want to give them that aggressive, just distance crossing off right. tank because she's so good at rotating from one side to the other. You bring war to my well, they're board. still going to get second pick, I notably as they pick their yours. maps, they've still opted for, for second pick, but they, they win this last one, so Cats on Mars going to first pick here. Uh, Genos is first off of the board, followed by maybe a Terminus and a Makoa. Interesting. I mean, I know there was some, some conversation surrounding Maybe the the uh, the aim tracking the onto Terminus himself. Yeah. I mean, is that really the reason you think that the Terminus is more so picked here in the console league? I mean, if Terminus did nothing other than not being aim assisted <laughs> on, then no. Yeah, I mean, right. he, he does. He has to. He brings. He the was burst. literally just a blob that did nothing. <laughs> that yet captures there. the point. <laughs> Like Luna without IO, basically. Yeah, right, exactly. No, but I mean, he has the burst potential, and the, the fact that the shield has effectively an infinite amount of blocking is huge. Me. I mean, you can negate anything if you time it right, and these players, you know, they've played it enough where they should be able to time it right. And uh, you'd hope you'd be able to hear Makoa Victor uh, Drogos Champions maybe two through four here for uh, wasted potential with the Terminus, the obviously, and number one. Me. A lot of good damage there. Yeah. You know, we saw Drogos on this Your map earlier today. To Obviously me. running Worm Jets that time. Opted for more of the indoor fighting in the keep side, which allowed uh, the other team to kind of adapt as they, they moved forward. So seeing how they play around that Drogos, I think will be important this time around. Try but keep maybe up. a Koga for their own over on the Cats on Mars side. And I don't like it as much on this map. I mean, I was just <laughs> highlighting it, but I mean, look at look at the draft it's against, yeah. right? Last time it made sense, I feel, because it, I mean, it was against the Tyra specifically. It's sure. super good in that situation. Io main heal would be very interesting. It lets the whole team okay. get very aggressive. You can drop the Luna Careful. on the point and then kind of just walk into them with everybody else. That's one of the things that people have been saying about her kit. The sure. capture point from the capture point ability is going to be solid, but that means she can't go lifelink, which means the healing is right. going to be a lot worse. Yeah, I don't know. I'm nervous about that. I mean, Io, and, and it's not any time necessarily due to Io, but we, mm -hmm. we've seen her twice now. This will be the third time she's 0 and 2, once in the Premier League, once here in the Console League, maybe searching for her first win here on Stone Keep. Cats on Mars, though, on the opposite side. They're up 2 1, looking to seal things out as we head down into game four. Well, third time's the charm, or at least that's what <laughs> you're hoping for if you're wasted potential. Again, one game in the PPL on Ice Mines. She lost one game earlier. She lost, so Io really hoping to turn this one around on Stone Keep. And she's surrounded by some bodies that can do it, but you have an equal and opposite opposing team here that is going to be just as strong. Ian Hart this time around on the Koga Vivian back on, well, Vivian. And they grab the Genos for the damage amp over there as well. So, so a little bit of strength here for Cats on Mars. Genos Koga worked so well last game. Why not just rock it again? Immediately dropping Luna onto the objective to begin the capture. As the fight for the high ground commences. First blood is going to go the way of red. I'm going to be able to call that away. And again, this is just beautifully played so far, just in terms of where exactly you're keeping Luna placed and moving her around. That, again, is the kind of key to keeping things going. Not on the point right now, but huh. who needs that when you have a tank? They trade off. That is good communication coming down from kills so far happening all on the side of Wasted Potential as they just tend to melt. A little bit of retaliation from Cats on Mars, but, but nowhere near enough to find any objective control. 78% thanks, Luna. I don't think any of the actual champions have stepped onto the objective so far. It has been all thanks to the support. One for one here. Terminus getting up in Vivian's face. He's going to win that one. Let's take a look at this loadout, though. There's a cheeky little interaction happening. He's so running some movement speed. Huh. I was noticing he was spamming Moonlight a lot, and it looked like it was reducing the cooldown of being able to, like, micro Luna around. But I thought that might have been a loadout card or something, but guess not. Looks like he's just doing it in the appropriate time frame. That's one of the things. Luna, uh, when when eliminated, when destroyed outright, is going to take a long time, full Baby. cooldown. Whereas Luna, when you're moving her around, is significantly reduced in comparison. But unfortunately, all the Luna in the world couldn't help with what they needed to do, and that was find control, find kills. Cats on Mars find themselves the first point. They continue to push forward, but it's going to be met with a little bit of opposition. It's going to be three kills total, waste of potential pickup. 
burning down the first 30 seconds of the two and a half minutes. I was kind of quiet. I mean, Katz on Mars just capturing away on that one, and nobody from Waste of Potential. <laughs> I mean, they definitely said, could Mine. have. They, Makoa was there plenty with enough time, even when you consider a 40% movement speed or Io could have given him to get to the objective on time. Still didn't happen. Ian Hart, no luminary mark at the moment. To the back line he goes, trying to assassinate one of these supports. Io hops up to the high ground here. This could be a good Cyclone strike. Going to be able to find some healing. Going to be able to try and live through this as best they can. But Mr. Pickles is the one finding two right now. Ian Hart does get one with a Cyclone Strike. And then the Fernando being able to pick up the scraps that are left to him. But it's still going to be enough. I mean, they find their way back onto the payload. And trying to figure out who exactly to break down next. They're coming up on the most difficult choke point for Stone Keep. And so there's going to be a lot of effort needed to be exerted here by Gods on Mars to push through. One minute on the clock. Overpower strikes. And Makoa will just go flying off of Stone Keep. Very effective to, to talk about overpower at this stage of Stone Keep. Can be absolutely lethal for a lot of different reasons. Khan trying to move in past Luna. The Fox and the Dragon are enough to deter the man, the myth, the legend, Khan, for at least the time being. In all his days in the army, he never thought that he was going to have to fight an ethereal fox for control of the high ground. But that's the world he lives in now, and that's the world he's going to have to deal with. <laughs> Clever Pup trying to do whatever he can. Of course, there's a flying dragon, so I'm assuming that he has some other Ooh. concerns that are going to be coming through. But these shots have been very, very on point from Drogos, from Makoa. And in terms of control, they're keeping things under wraps pretty well. You have 12 seconds left on the clock. Overtime's going to be able to come through, but it is not going to be looking pretty here for Cats on Mars as the damage is just being rung true from Wasted Potential. Yeah, the struggle is Wasted Potential have so much more range than Cats on Mars that you almost have to just go all in to get this pick. Salvo spit up over the top, finds some good damage. Vivian's trying to chunk her way through. Mako is one of the healthiest boys in the game. Just a very, very hard one to walk your way through. A lot of sustain here. Battle Shout is help keeping the stream alive. But the offense is starting to lose its legs with that first kill going the way of Vic. Pow gets rid of Ian Hart, and now it's looking like Mr. Pickles might be the next to go down. Trying to stay alive, going to be able to do so. Pow maintaining his life without taking too much damage. Vivian goes down, Mr. Pickles goes down. And I don't even get to mention Genos before the round ends. Overtime collapses quickly. And Cats on Mars, even though they were able to capture themselves a point, don't quite continue the route. Oof. And that's just, that's a Fernando dream. I mean, if you're running old Scorch, that's exactly what you want. A good immortal for sure. Three people surrounding him, really committed there for the kill. Turns it all around. Mr. Pickle is nicely done. And in the next patch, Fernando will be able to cancel immortal early. I think this is most useful around stuff. You know, like if you're trying to dodge a dragon punch or a reanimate or something like that, you dodge it, immediately cancel to throw up your shield, dash out, Five, do something when you four, only really need that three, small two, instance of immortality one. to do what you need to do, and then you can get back to the full effectiveness of your kit. Because you're pretty useless when you're down in Immortal. You're 80%, I would venture to say, if your movement speed is sapped. You can only uh, attack in you know, that one limited range that you've got. Termus does get clipped, and Makoa gets shut down. I mean, that's going to be a great way to start it. A good through time and space again just to clip some damage. Looking like he might go down, almost saved by the bell, but not quite. The Sentinels and the machine gun not really enough to burn it through. Luna stays alive, although it might only be for a little bit. Barrage oh. drops down, and Vivian, while they were able to fight back, is not going to maintain control. 0.6%, 20 on the one side. With Mr. Pickles going down, that might be just enough for Waste of Potential to find control for the rest of the time they need to. Pretty useless overpower there as well. Nobody around to follow up on it. Again, on the objective, Khan can't really throw anybody off to a lethal effect, so he just has to carry around the target for the six seconds and hopefully drop him off somewhere. Pretty sloppy point fight there from Cats on Mars. Wasted potential. Despite losing their Makoa instantly, Terminus being poked out by time and space, they don't even need to use Ancient Rage or reanimate to get that fight win. That's very surprising. And honestly, probably one of your best bets being able to maintain it. They use reanimate now to be able to come back and trying to keep himself alive, but they lose G-Pan and well, just as quickly Jehovos loses life part two as probably, again, that's one of the worst case scenarios for a reanimate is to, to come back and immediately and get melted again. <laughs> 
And so popping a couple of vaults after the objective. Plenty of time to recharge them, though, as they come through. But Cats on Mars, they want to stop this one as fast as possible. Wasted potential are showing they have a lot more potential than they did the last time we saw them play. Definitely fighting back a lot harder than I anticipated, even after the first two games. For sure, for sure. Dragon Punch at the Ready Barrage, as well as Ancient Rage here. Just trying to break this corner. And for the same reasons, I think the offense struggled. I think the defense could succeed. The range superiority of Victor, as well as Drogos, is going to start to make things easier for this offense to break, find that magical pick. They've already found a two for one. Let's see if they can convert it into anything. It's just going to be able to give them that long range. I mean, Victor right now, nine streak already burning for him. A good through time in space. Again, clipping the Terminus. It's probably the easiest target to hit, but Zundel not going to be able to do too much in terms of follow-up. The rest of the team, though, is there. They're hanging out, and they're ready to commit to it to be able to find themselves moving on forward. Everyone on Wasted Potential falls back, and they buy themselves a little bit more time, but not enough that they should feel safe just yet. There's some more around to, to sap here. Hook's going to miss onto the high ground. And I think this is really good by Katsumars to hold here. Yes, they might lose the whole round if they lose here, but again, they need to play in their wheelhouse. They need to play at the range that's effective for them, and this is that. I mean, they're able to find it as it is. Koga getting aggressive. Victor is probably one of, gonna be one of your number one targets. Again, 11 streak now, as he's been able to re-up it. A lot of damage coming down from Io as well. Bandmade making sure his name is heard and sung from the rooftops as part of the reason this team continues moving forward. That's three clean kills, and it's looking like it might be a full-on conversion at this rate. Everyone getting dismounted, they're controlled, they're corralled, and they're not even gonna be able to jump down just in time as Mr. Pickles shield up, but here comes the barrage. Probably pretty smart here. Oh, Mortal is burned to counter it out. Victor is completely focused on Fernando, and they're able to save the payload for the time being. The kills are happening, though, for the defense. They might be able to hold Ooh, this. What a good grenade, but it's not going to be enough. They keep it 2-2, even though you commit the Immortal. I was a little worried, sweating even, as it came through. because It didn't feel like maybe the right call. They're going to be able to hold on, keep a somewhat iron grip on themselves here moving forward and keep some control. But I mean, it's 122,000 damage right now, which is 50,000 above the next highest, really, when it comes down to it. And then you draw a little bit longer of a line over where he's standing in comparison to the Vivian. So a lot of damage definitely being POWs. I would say best game so far this set. Yeah, for Three, sure, he's had a, a good set nonetheless, playing a lot of uh, very champions, to be honest, at this point. A little bit of that Leon, a little bit of Koga, a little bit of Victor. Kind of running the gambit here. Life Rip picked up for Mr. Koga. He doesn't have the Genos Luminary Mark at the moment. No Immortal to save you from this Dragon Punch, but the movement, perhaps the most console <laughs> clip of all time, as G Pan Velocity just does not have the turning radius <laughs> to make the connection. A survival-only Ancient Rage has popped, swinging at air to no avail, completely falling flat on his face. Vivian able to find a kill onto the Makoa as well, so it's going to be some good control. Waste of potential are going to continue trying to <laughs> fight back onto the point, but I, I never thought that just punch, the, bro. <laughs> the slide to the left all around, just a nice... It's like Damn a, it, you, Fernando! <laughs> someone took a stick, right, mounted it in the middle of the objective, and then tied a string oh, to Drogo's man. and turned the jetpack on, so he yeah. just spun around oh, the entire that's time. Funny, dude. Couldn't quite seal the deal there. The question is whether or not they can make it back on. <laughs> He's listing it. lazily to the left. <laughs> How do we chase him down? <laughs> Unfortunately for him, the answer is not. Now it's 84% for Cats on Mars. It's going to get contested a little bit here. But it took him a while to get there. Jehovah's does have the reanimate. Going to pop that right now. Try to get the damage down onto the objective. And the question is, how fast can they melt him with that life? Part two. Whoa. Victor's pumping it out. Nice bounce off the wall. But Vivian manages to survive for the time being. Scrambling to find a barrage target. I just have to drop these goggles here. At least lands one shell down on a Fernando. One for one so far. Grenade to the back line. Luna's capping. This whole time, it's worth keeping an eye on. That's the biggest thing. They're going to kill off Io completely which is going to give and alleviate the pressure. But you have to pay attention to the objective. You have to pay attention to the percentage. 90 to 84 right now. The kills are coming up. That's three in a row here. Four cats on Mars without dropping anybody, and they're going to continue that up. Overtime ticks through, 
and they grab themselves a third point <laughs> in this map. Keep on rolling forward. I feel like as that con, you see your, your backliner get hooked. You should probably get in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, jump <laughs> off there, throw the shield up, give a battle shout to that Vivian. I mean, he was like, oh, man, watching her. Like, oh, that sucks for you. That's <laughs> couldn't be me. How does it feel down there? Don't Little catch, man. catch me not getting <laughs> hooked out. Clever pup playing for the KD, walking down the back line. Now he's getting in there. One more shot would have claimed Io's life. Vivian might be able to clean up one of these front liners before they make it back to spawn. Io's pumping, trying to keep this guy topped off. At least the momentum gets slowed at least for a little while here. Cats on Mars will have to get a pick, a pick they never were able to find in the first yeah. round. So this could be enough. I think the question will come down to well, how much can these Sentinels do now that they've been popped? How fast can you shred them? And how well can you pay attention to where Luna is, who's also going to be able to contest this payload in the right circumstances? You're going to have a Sad Begone goggles. almost charged up here, 96% there for Io. And yeah, the cancellation on Victor, of course, now he's at 75%, so it's almost like it never happened as far as he's concerned. And with a minute and 20 left on the clock, we've been having this conversation all day. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, the 13, 4, and 7 right now seems to be going pretty well. Oh, no, you forged potential. your ultimate. Here's 60% back. <laughs> Io trying to keep a lid on this one, but it looks like Cats on Mars, Gore, starting to pull away with it. It's not over just yet, but this payload, if it converts, would end the set. Oh, convenient. There it's going to be. I'm so happy he was able to get it back just as fast. There's the Dragon Punch as well to connect and find out person of Uranus still being able to fall in return. So it's been bouncing back and forth. A couple of kills here, a couple of kills there. Waste of potential with the respawn proximity. Should be able to whew, alleviate some of that pressure, keep themselves rolling forward. This counts on Mars. They have 30 seconds to get back or else this is going to a 3-3 mid fight. Well, some crucial ultimates here. If time and space can find a pick, and I think it, I think it would be fairly easy, not from that angle, but that was the right <laughs> idea to sh to get up there and just you know throw that pass down the hallway and see what happens. Overpower is ready to go, instantly deleting anyone from any range, but instead it's a commander's grab into the wall. And six, five, four, three, two, one, we go. Yeah. I don't know if this offense is going to be happening. Definitely not looking that good. Even still, if they were able to get there, Luna was hanging out next to the objective. And Pau finds two more kills at the end. And here it is. A nice dash to run away, and then the nice <laughs> slide to the right there from Mr. Pickles. Oh, yeah. Keeps him alive. Content, baby. Just a little bit of a shimmy, a little Macarena. You can see the essence of where he learned to move like that with the salsa. As uh, <laughs> Who's getting these replays today? Who's on replays right now? Point spawning in 50. That's Anthony. Of course it's Anthony. I was going to say, I've had a lot of clean, nice little Perfect, angles awesome, setting up yeah. exactly the what minute, we're trying so to see. The, oh. the biggest tell-all for when it's Anthony <laughs> is when you're not just watching the champion. When you get anything that is off-camera, that's how you know. <laughs> and, and action. They're all fantastic. <laughs> very, roll. very well captured as well. Just like watching Fernando dance around a dragon punch. That's a very good... I don't know what those are called, like an analogy, I guess, that uh, is never going to come through. And I'm never <laughs> going to use in my average life, but you'll never know. Because right now, Jehovah's getting melted down. Barrage dropped. Hey, look, at 40% he's going to be able to maintain as of right now. What going to expect that one coming through. But a Cyclone Strike gets rid of G-Pan. And now they're looking to melt down one more target. Reanimate's available. Uh-oh. And is he going to pop it? it? Sure is available. He's going to hold it for now. Waste of potential are in the lead. Decent margin, too, 45% to that what was 10 to 15. Now climbing up, caught out. Missed position there from Genos as Powell claims not one, but two lives. Vivian's getting rolling here on the high ground, Gore. This could be trouble, and it is. Two kills, three kills. Ooh. Vivian wants to end this set here and now. And he's not stopping there, ready to go, looking for the dragon. Clever Pup takes him out of the sky, but it was between the two of them. Again, Reanimate is available. Pops it a little bit too late, and it's going to charge it up, times it perfectly with that. Wow. Jehovos gets melted instantly. A perfectly timed play from Cats on Mars to make sure that Terminus has no impact. That's big sad, boys. Look at this, hopping up and down. I think that was either some life steals or a Genos heal. Mr. MH Vivian managed to obliterate that Makoa. That was looking rough, too. He's at about 10% HP when he got pushed. Whew. Still came out on top. Nicely executed. That's the type of content I like to see. Cats on Mars 
wraps that one up nightly and airtight, yeah. you know what I mean? Hit the overpower, use all the resources, don't save anything. Very well done. To know the timing on yeah. reanimate, to be able to be like, okay, he hit it, and now is when I need to shoot. Like, that kind of timing, along with the overpower. Did he hit, like the, oh, he hit the time and space time and, and space, the overpower? Time and space, then into that overpower. Was that was like, cleaner was than I even saw. Systematic there from Cats on Mars. And it's, again, that's just perfect play to come through. A nice little bow on top yeah. of what was a little trip up there in the middle of the set. Waste of potential, though, are, are not a team to scoff at, is what I'm learning from this. I mean, even looking at the post-game stats, honestly, if you just looked at the damage numbers, you would guess the other team won. 198k. Jeez. Pals, Victor. Very effective, but not going to be enough here today. It was the 15 and Jeez. 9, the 19 and 9, Vivian. Efficient for Victor, but again, damage is not the sole determinant of what wins games. You have to look at everyone else. You know, 2 and 12, Makoa, 8 and 14, everyone else going ext extremely negative. A lot of good control from Cats on Mars. Obviously, the top play of the game was, was Mr. Pickles dancing around the Dragon Punch, but you do have to give a lot of credence and credit to what Vivian was able to accomplish. A lot of that last point fight was that triple kill yeah. that kind of started things off that, that immediately <laughs> went into another kill, I think, onto G-Pan. So, like, there's obviously those little moments that are going to burn through, and it was just the, the left-click queen coming through and, and kind of taking lead today. Bop, 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 bop. Shut down. A little Dragon Punch. Trying to figure out where this Drogos went. This was good. Almost got the save. Not to so young close. Genos, but Opportunity and Chaos plus Luminary. It's a recipe for disaster and carnage. And this that's a good thing to highlight. Like that is long range for Vivian. That's that's a little bit out of her wheelhouse, but Ooh. with all the bonus damage that's swirling around in the meta, she's really able to kind of reach that, make that effective, right? Still hitting hundred bullet hundred per damage or wow, Jesus. 100 damage per bullet, you're able to still kind of be pretty effective from some ranges you wouldn't yeah. otherwise be if you didn't have Opportunity in Chaos or if you didn't have Luminary. Being able to deal that, I mean, there was even moments towards the end where you could see splash damage being a big role for her as well. Something you don't think of too often with Vivian, but the Sentinels being able to get it, there was one in that triple kill, two kind of for one package that she came through. So just playing it really well. And if you're going to name yourself Vivian, you better play Vivian really well. But Cats on Mars seal the deal in game number four. But to continue breaking it down and to recap the day, I'm going to go back to the desk. Appreciate it, fellas. Thank you very much for casting that final set of the day. It was a fun one. You're absolutely right, though. I mean, not without a little bit of a hiccup in there. Wasted potential showing. They certainly can't hang with these guys. But Kresnik was a fun way to round out the day. I'm yeah. replaying that Drogos clip still over and over in my head. We were losing it. Uh, watching that one, but they end up winning uh, on the back end of it, so they'll certainly be happy. And I like the way Gore said that. If you're going to name yourself MH Vivian, you better be able to play Vivian, and uh, you certainly can. Yeah, I mean, they they weren't able to deal with him really that effectively at no. all. I mean, they got a couple kills on him, but just the fact that he can... You can't ignore a Vivian. A Vivian that's free-firing, getting that opportunity and chaos damage boost without getting contested too hard, that's when Vivian's going to be at their peak. Mm. And again... Uncontested that last fight, they were shielding, running away, triple kill immediately. So great Vivian play, I think, by him. No, and as far as you know, console sets go. I mean, three one. That that starts mm -hmm. to get, you know, a little bit in the contested territory. Let's look back at some of the action that we had today. We started off the day in a pretty long fashion. Three two in favor of Aaron Monters. The way that one goes, three zeros all the way down the list until you see Cats on Mars wasted potential at three one. And then elevate East Storm, go 3-0. Nothing really jumps out at me there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you look at the Cyclone Vroom Froom. Last time Vroom Froom won. Cyclone now won 3-0. So which one, uh, which one was the fluke, I guess, is now we got to decide <laughs> moving forward. Well, we got three weeks probably till we find right. out again for sure, right? But, yeah, Cyclone reestablishing themselves. I think that Aerial Arise Aaron Monitor game was really good too because yep. Aerial Arise kind of coming back again. I mean, still doing better than last week, so right. good changes to them. But NA is uh, where we're, we're headed for yeah, that's right. That's absolutely correct. We'll see where, after everything shakes out today, how the standings are looking for us here. Some fun ones to round it all out. Elevate, of course, up top at 4 0 12. All 3 0s for them. E Storm won't forget it now. 2 1 in that second place spot. Cats on Mars, of course, 2 2. And then uh, Waste of Potential there at 0 
for Onslaught, you know, they're rounding out in a similar fashion to Elevate, only dropping two maps up to this point, 4 0 10. Hydra Gaming, though, I'm looking forward to that rematch. Yeah, definitely. I, I remember they looked pretty solid last time, I mm -hmm. think. I think they took a map off of them or the two. So, want to see them again, definitely. But Onslaught, I mean, after that game on Stremex today, that was a dominant yep. set, I think, across the board. Lots it of was. crazy picks coming out for them, so. Crazy on their part. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun to watch, absolutely. A team to be looked at for sure. But that's it for your NA standings over on the EU side of things. Similar picture, of course, that EU Xbox region. Still pretty contested. Cyclone at 3-1-7. The only differentiator between them and Bustdown, of course, who are at 3-1-6. Another rematch to keep your eyes on. And then down in that bottom bracket, 4-0-12. Flashpoint in the same fashion as Elevate, not dropping a map. Up to this point yet, 4-0-12. But Aaron Monner right behind him. Honestly, in both of these regions, you, you see, you know, the, the first place team, but then another team who, who through the first couple of weeks have shown that they can perform. The, those next roundabout rematches are going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's both regions with three teams I think that can contest. I mean, even with Cyclone coming back. Sure. I still think there's a chance for that to be in uh, just a brawl yeah. for the rest of the season. Well, they're at least going to get to match up two more times over the course of the next few weeks. It was a fun Monday, though, a good way to get back into this week of fun Paladins action. We got the minor league for you guys tomorrow, starting at the same time today, so make sure you're on the lookout here at Mixer.com slash Paladins Game. As always, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I now, powering the control room for the Paladins console league.